Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about Shakespeare and the reset because Shakespeare is a very mysterious character and I think that's because he has been used as a means of explaining some of our hidden history and we're going to get into it looking at some of these lost theaters or playhouses. So let's get started. So as mentioned, a lot of mystery surrounding Shakespeare. Did he even write the works that are attributed to him? And a lot of conjecture, a lot of theories, but we're going to be looking at these lost playhouses, these theaters. And there's one we're going to look at here called the Curtain Theater, or used to be called the Curtain Theater, but it is now significantly buried beneath London. And there were excavations that happened in 2012. And the exact location that was lost until, as mentioned, 2012. The approximate locations of these theaters were known, but the, the exact locations in some cases were lost. And what you're looking at are just the remains of London's second purpose-built playhouse, the Curtain Theater. And just as a frame of reference, I believe this area is the current city of London, St. Paul's Cathedral, and here's where the remains of that Curtain Theater were located. And we're going to look at this other site relatively close to the Curtain Theater called, well, just the theater. <laughs> and this is the Curtain Theater again during excavations. But this one now is looking at the second location called the Theater in uh, London Borough of Hackney. And as mentioned, both of these sites were deeply buried under 19th and 20th century buildings and deposits. And these are just some images from excavations at the second location. And there's an interesting floor that was uncovered. And I'm just going to zoom in on that here real quick. Excavated floor tiles. So I thought that was interesting. And a third location called the Boar's Head Playhouse. Deep under the ground, the remains of that early playhouse theater waited somehow undisturbed until 2019. And going back to our trusty map, upper right here, these were the two locations we looked at previously. And the arrow here points to the location of the Boar's Head Playhouse, which is off map here. But just as a general idea, here's some of the images from the excavation of that playhouse. And just wanted to mention they found some of the remains of this theater four meters approximately below modern ground level so over 13 feet so a lot of these sites significantly buried some of them lost only to be rediscovered in modern times and a fourth playhouse we're going to look at or theater is referred to as the globe theater and this theater was actually destroyed by fire. I think it was constructed in 1599, destroyed by fire in 1613. Then a second one was built on the same site, only to be destroyed. The precise location of the building remained unknown until a small part of the foundations was discovered in 1989. Yeah, the Globe Theater, Shakespeare's Playhouse Burned Down. And I believe it's underneath a place called uh, Anchor Terrace, or you know, portions of it were anyway. And here's where that theater was located on the other side of the Thames River. Here's the globe, and uh, here were the first two and the third one we looked at. So, yeah, it's an interesting story behind the globe theater because I guess the Puritans, they, according to the history, they detested the globe theater and everything it stood for, and they eventually destroyed it in 1644, but I think it was destroyed during some event. And we're told that in 1642, the Puritan-led parliament ordered the indefinite closure of all the London theaters. So that all plays were banned in 1642. And I think what we're looking at is a very well-crafted narrative to explain away why all these things are destroyed and buried. Again, that's an opinion on my part, but that is my opinion. But I should mention in 1660, we're told that Charles II ordered Parliament to lift the ban on the theaters and new theaters started to pop up. So there you go, a closed loop. And just one last playhouse here, 
Theater, Shakespeare's Lost Playhouse, now under a supermarket. And this one, it was under the Elephant and Castle shopping center and it went by this name here and we're told it was built in 1575 and continued all the way up to 1594 and it's also on the other side of the thames here just a lot of these lost playhouses theaters and some of them significantly buried only to be rediscovered but i guess this playhouse that i just mentioned it was uh, sitting under a shopping center well, i guess that shopping center more recently has been demolished. This is from 2021, so maybe there is something else there now. But yeah, this whole period of the 1500s, at least in Europe anyway, a lot of transition, it seems like, in this Tudor period. There's a lot of lost palaces associated with the Tudors, lost gardens. A lot of these structures just were destroyed. There's even documentaries about the lost palaces of Henry VIII. So I think we're looking at just remnants of this event, in my opinion. And I just wanted to mention here, before I get to a video update, there's an interesting documentary. I think you can watch it for free on YouTube called Cracking the Shakespeare Code. And they talk about some of these secret codes that are within the works of Shakespeare, potentially, and even who may have actually wrote some of the works. And Francis Bacon's name is mentioned. And as I mentioned, yeah, there's some codes potentially and these codes might lead all the way to a treasure island in Canada called Oak Island associated with Nova Scotia. I'm sure you guys have heard of Oak Island by now but it's worth looking into anyway the documentary I think you can watch it for free. All the world is a stage. Literally it's a script. Like these characters may have existed but I think the damage that was done to these places is older potentially than the 1600s in my view. At the end here I just want to do a video update actually. In my last video I mentioned these coins that were minted by uh, some of these individual states after the United States became independent in 1776 after the Revolutionary War. Some of these states minted their own coins like New York, New Jersey, Vermont, Connecticut to name a few. And here's just uh, a look at some of these coins. This one's from New Jersey, this one is from New York, and this one's from Connecticut. Just really interesting coins, but I have an update, and when I read this, I wasn't surprised, but uh, it's an interesting note here to add. Many of the actual coins themselves reside today in the cabinets of individual numismatists and in museum collections, but none of the punches, dies, presses, or other hardware used in the minting process is reported to have survived. So kind of having to reverse engineer the history of these things, I thought that was an interesting tidbit. And this last sentence here, a large number of these copper coins from this period are orphans in that nothing is recorded about their provenance. So I think that is an interesting little update on the coins and I just wanted to mention it and a lot of these coins as mentioned date from typically the 1780s at least what we're told anyway so I think that's about it just a quick little video here but I do want to give a shout out and thanks to my channel members thank you for your help and support as well as my patrons I really do appreciate everything you guys do and I appreciate it so with that being said until next time take care bye